Hey everybody and welcome to the Deep Dive. We're going to be talking all about alcohol and its impact on your health today. Um, basically giving you the cheat sheet you need to navigate, you know, all the confusing stuff out there. Well, you know, it's interesting how we often think about alcohol as just a personal choice, but the reality is it's a huge global health issue. Okay, wow. So global issue. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. The World Health Organization estimates over 3 million deaths every year are directly because of alcohol. It's actually like 5.3% of all deaths around the world. Wow. That puts things in a whole new light. And if you just look at Europe, alcohol caused almost 300,000 deaths in 2018 alone. That's 5.5% of all deaths in that region. Okay, so we know it's a big deal, but what are the actual risks besides, you know, the obvious hangover? Well, the biggest causes of alcohol-related deaths in Europe are kind of a mixed bag. Liver damage is obviously up there, but cancer is actually the number one cause. It accounts for like 29% of those deaths. Wait, cancer? You don't really hear about that when people are just talking about drinking? That's the thing. Research has shown a super clear connection between alcohol and higher chances of developing certain cancers, mm -hmm. especially for those who have at least one drink every day. So we're not talking about just having a drink every once in a while. Daily drinking is where it gets really risky. Right. Even just one drink a day can significantly increase your risk for cancers of the digestive system, liver, and even breast cancer in women. You really got to think twice about that harmless daily drink. It is definitely something to think about. But let's go back to the basics for a second. How does alcohol actually affect our bodies? Alcohol has this kind of weird thing called a biphasic effect. At first, it acts like a stimulant. It gives you that feeling of being happy and more social. But then as your body starts to break it down, it actually starts to depress your central nervous system. That's what makes you sleepy and gives you that feeling of being drunk. Ah, so it gets you all hyped up and then brings you down. Yeah, exactly. And importantly, all of this affects your attention and coordination. That's why accidents happen more often when people are drinking, especially things like driving. So that's why even a couple of drinks can be dangerous. Exactly. And remember that the effects of alcohol are different depending on your blood alcohol level. That's just how much alcohol is in your blood. Even a small amount can start to affect your reflexes and how well you see. So what happens as you drink more? When does it get really dangerous? Oh yeah, as your blood alcohol level goes up, the effects get worse and worse. You might lose control, become apathetic, and at really high levels, you could even slip into a coma or die. That's scary. But I'm assuming it's not just how much you drink, right? You're right, everybody's different. Your body weight matters a lot because alcohol spreads through your body water. Someone with a lower body weight will have more alcohol in their system if they drink the same amount as someone who weighs more. That makes sense. So it's not just how many drinks, but how your body handles them. What other things play a role? Well, your biological sex makes a difference too. Women are usually more affected by the same amount of alcohol compared to men. And obviously how fast you drink matters. The faster you drink, the faster it gets into your blood and the stronger the effects are. So sipping is better than chugging. Totally. And here's a good tip. Eating before or while you drink can really slow down how fast your body absorbs alcohol. So that thing about not drinking on an empty stomach is actually true. Oh yeah, for sure. Moderation and being aware are really important with alcohol. Speaking of moderation, most people aren't trying to quit entirely. So are there realistic ways to enjoy alcohol without going overboard? That's the question, isn't it? Honestly, there's no amount of alcohol that's completely safe but there are guidelines for what they call low-risk drinking. Okay, what exactly does low-risk drinking mean? How much can you drink? Well, for women, the low-risk limit is usually around 10 grams of alcohol a day. That's about one standard drink. For men, it's double that 20 grams or two standard drinks. Okay, but what is a standard drink? That's always confused me. A standard drink is like a small glass of wine, like about 100 milliliters with 13% alcohol, or a regular beer around 300 milliliters at 4% alcohol or a shot of liquor, which is 30 milliliters at 40% alcohol. Okay, got it. So. One glass of wine, one beer, or one shot. What about binge drinking? Is there a safe limit for that? Nope, not at all. There's no safe amount for binge drinking. That's when you drink a lot in a short amount of time. For men, it's usually five or more drunks in a few hours, and for women, it's four or more. Binge drinking is really bad for you because your blood alcohol level spikes way up. That increases your risk of accidents, injuries, and long-term health problems. So even if you only drink a few times a week, if you have a lot at once, it's still risky. Exactly. And remember, those low-risk limits are just guidelines. They're not guarantees. Yeah. Everyone handles alcohol differently, so what might be low risk for one person could be a problem for someone else. So you really need to pay attention to your body and know your limits. Absolutely. 
And if you're worried about your drinking or having trouble cutting back, don't be afraid to ask for help. There are resources out there, and it's okay to ask for support. This has been really helpful. We've talked about everything from global statistics to how alcohol affects our bodies and even some tips for moderation, but we're not done yet. We've got a lot more to explore in our deep dive into alcohol and its effects on your health. So we were talking about low-risk drinking. Is that actually something people can do? Well, like we said, it's not a guarantee, but more about making good choices and healthier habits. You know, this report actually has some great tips for people who want to cut back. Awesome. What are they? One thing that people don't always think about is choosing different drinks. Like, instead of grabbing a beer or wine right away, why not try something non-alcoholic? Okay, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. But what are some good options? I don't want to feel like I'm missing out. Oh, there are so many choices these days. Sparkling water with a bit of juice, herbal teas, those fancy mocktails that are everywhere now, even just water with cucumber or mint to make it taste good. Yeah. It's all about finding what you like and sticking with it. Yeah, I like that. It's like making a good choice but still enjoying yourself. Exactly. And here's another tip that might surprise you. Don't just drink alcohol to quench your thirst, especially when you're exercising. You know alcohol dehydrates you. It's a diuretic. Oh, yeah. I totally do that. I grab a beer after a run and think I'm hydrating. A lot of people think that. Just stick to water or sports drinks when you're working out. And speaking of changing things up, this report also says to try some new activities that don't involve alcohol. Yeah, I guess that could help you not always think about drinking when you're with friends. It's all about having fun in different ways. Instead of always meeting at a bar, maybe go for a hike or have a movie night or a cooking class, you could even volunteer for something you care about. Who knows? You might even find a new hobby. That's so true. It's easy to get stuck doing the same thing, but there are so many ways to have fun without alcohol. Absolutely. And when you are in a place where there's a lot of alcohol, like a party or a bar, have a plan. Like a strategy to get through those situations. Yeah, exactly. Decide before you even go how much you're going to drink if you're going to drink at all. Eat a good meal before you go so you don't absorb alcohol as fast. And maybe the most important thing is to have a response ready for when someone offers you a drink and you want to say no. Oh, I like that. Having a script in your head. It's so awkward when you don't know what to say and feel pressured. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can just say, no, thank you. You don't have to explain yourself. I like that. It's like you're in control and making your own choices. Right. Okay, so let's talk about those times when you do have a drink. What are some ways to make it less risky? Yeah, I want to know. Well, this report says the most important thing is to be mindful. Don't just drink without thinking. Pay attention to how much you're drinking, how you're feeling, and slow down if you need to. It's all about enjoying the moment, not just trying to get drunk. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's easy to get carried away when you're out with people, but paying attention can make a big difference. Uh -huh. Another good tip is to pick at least two days a week where you don't drink any alcohol. That way your body can recover and you can break those habits of drinking all the time. Hmm. I've never thought about scheduling days without alcohol, but I can see how that could be helpful. Yeah, it can really work. And when you do drink, maybe go for drinks that have less alcohol in them. Like a light beer instead of a yeah. regular one or a spritzer instead of a whole glass of wine. Yep, exactly. Those little changes add up. And don't forget what we talked about before, have your first drink after you've eaten something. That food can really help slow down how fast your body absorbs the alcohol. These are all great tips. So basically it's about being aware, taking it slow, and choosing what and how much you drink. You got it. And remember, if you're having trouble controlling your drinking or you're worried about it, there's no shame in talking to a professional. There's help out there and it can really change things for the better. You know, we talked before about how alcohol isn't just a personal choice. It's also a big global health issue that affects everyone. That's right. It's easy to just focus on ourselves, but drinking alcohol really has a big impact on the whole world. I'm curious about that. What are some of the ways it affects society? Well, one big thing is the burden it puts on healthcare systems everywhere. Treating things like liver disease, cancer, heart disease, and accidents from drinking costs a lot of money and uses up a lot of resources. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We already talked about how alcohol is linked to all those serious health problems. Exactly. And it's not just the medical costs. There are also indirect costs from people not being able to work, disabilities, and people dying younger. When people have health problems because of alcohol, they're less likely to be able to work and contribute to society. So it's not just about personal health. It affects the economy, too. For sure. And then there's the social impact, which is harder to measure, but just as important. 
alcohol is a big factor in violence, both at home and in public. Yeah, it makes people do things they wouldn't normally do and can make fights worse. Right. And we can't forget about all the car accidents that happen because of alcohol, all those injuries and deaths and the economic costs that come with them. It's kind of scary to think about how alcohol affects the safety and well-being of whole communities. It is. And then there's the emotional toll it takes on people, families, and relationships. Misusing alcohol can lead to breakups, family problems, and a lot of emotional pain. It really is a complex issue that affects everyone, not just the person drinking. Mm. But I think it's good that we're talking about it and making people more aware. I agree. The more we know about how alcohol works and the risks involved, the better choices we can make and the healthier our communities can be. That's a good point. We're going to take a quick break and then come back for the last part of our deep dive where we'll wrap up everything we've learned about alcohol and its effects on health. We're back for the last part of our deep dive. Before we finish up, though, I want to talk more about how to know if your drinking has become a real problem. Like, when is it more than just moderate drinking? That's a really important question. It can be hard to tell, but this report we've been looking at actually has some helpful signs to watch out for, signs that maybe you need professional help. Yeah. I think a lot of people wonder about that. What are some of the first things to look out for if you're worried someone's drinking is becoming a problem? Well, one of the main things is if you start to crave alcohol a lot or feel like you need to drink. So it's more than just wanting a drink on a Friday night. It's like you feel like you have to have alcohol. Exactly. It's those thoughts about drinking that just keep popping up feeling like you need to drink even when you know you shouldn't or making excuses to have a drink. Like that little voice saying, just one more won't hurt even when you know you should stop. Exactly. And it becomes a problem when you keep giving in to those cravings even though it's causing problems in your life. So it's not just the craving, it's also not being able to resist it. What else should people be aware of? Another big sign is if you can't control how much you drink, like if you say you'll only have two drinks, but you always end up having more. Or if you just can't stop once you start. So like if you plan to have two drinks, but you always end up having four or five, that's not good. Yeah, that's definitely something to pay attention to. It's that feeling of losing control even when you're trying not to. So it's not just how much you drink, but that feeling of not being able to stop. Are there any physical signs that might mean there's a problem? Yeah, if you start getting withdrawal symptoms when you don't drink for a few days, that's a sign your body has become dependent on alcohol. What kind of symptoms are we talking about? Well, it's different for everyone, but some common ones are sweating, shaky hands, anxiety, not being able to sleep, even feeling sick to your stomach. Oh, that sounds pretty bad. Yeah, it can be. It means your body needs alcohol to function normally, which is not a good thing. Are there any changes in behavior that might mean someone is drinking too much? Definitely. Needing more and more alcohol to get the same effect is a sign of tolerance. That's a big sign of alcohol dependence. So like if you used to feel a little tipsy after two beers, but now you need four to feel the same way? Exactly. Your body gets used to having alcohol and needs more of it to get the same feeling. That's not a good sign. Nope. And it often happens along with another warning sign. Continuing to drink even though it's causing problems. What do you mean by that? Like, if you keep drinking, even though it's causing problems with your relationships, at work, with your finances, or even with your health. So, like, if you're fighting with your family because of drinking, but you still keep doing it, that's serious. Oh, yeah, definitely. It means alcohol has become more important than those things, and you might need help to stop. This has been a really eye-opening discussion. If there's one thing you want people to take away from our deep dive, what would it be? I think the most important thing is that knowledge is power. When you understand how alcohol works, what the risks are, and how to recognize the signs of a problem, you can make better choices for yourself. That's so true. And even if you don't feel like you have a problem, this information can help you support friends and family who might be struggling. We can all help create a better environment where people feel comfortable talking about these things. And that wraps up our deep dive. We talked about everything from how alcohol affects the whole world to simple things you could do to be healthier. Remember, this isn't about never drinking again. It's about giving you the information you need to make good choices for yourself. Exactly. So cheers to making healthy choices. And that's it for the deep dive. Until next time, stay curious and stay well.